Hey guys, Cam McClellan. Hal Lewison. Welcome to today's Wealth One. This one's for you, yeah. Helen. Uh, I got an email this week on service departments and whether they're good or not, what my thoughts were. So I think I'll group service departments and defence housing into sort of one barrel and we'll just go through some of the pros and cons. <coughs> defence housing, um, Cam's got a hernia. I haven't got an operation on Monday. I coughed like crazy over the last two weeks and uh, apparently I've done myself a little bit of an injury. So what it is, it's when your stomach muscles come out of your stomach. Yeah, it's not pretty. <laughs> no. It's really, really uncomfortable actually. Yeah. Anyway. Thanks for bringing that, Bill. Um, oh, Cam hasn't got a wad top on today. Yeah, it's a crossfit workout today. Um, defence housing. So why do I not like defence housing? So you've got great rental yield, guaranteed rents for 10 years, government tenant. What could go wrong? Why do you not like them? Why do you not like them? Uh, they limit the opportunity to sell your property. How do they do that? So when you sell your property, guys, you want to sell to the broadest possible market you ever can. Uh, part of the reason why we suggest that uh, investment property should be single level, you rule out part of your market, elder people, disabled people, they can't access upstairs, they don't want them, part of your market gone. So if you're selling a defence housing property that's got a 10 year lease to a tenant, guess what? 70% of the market's gone, you're down to the 30 your property investors. <laughs> Inside that, the 30%, <laughs> there might not be 100% of the 30%, a lot of numbers here, that more to own so that's our property. So you're saying it's a pretty small fraction of people who are considering buying that property. So poof teeth. Yeah, so what um, happens then is you've got um, a property valuer who comes along and he goes, okay, I'm gonna value your property because you want to release some equity. In the general area, properties are worth this amount. Yours is defense housing. So you've got no one who ever wants to buy your house. So your property's undervalued. So they'll say to the bank, burr, burr, risk, burr, risk. No, 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 no. <laughs> Um, <coughs> serviced offices, because that's what Helen asked about. So, or, apart or apartments. Service apartments is what uh, I got asked about. So service departments has that compounding factor as well. So you've got a limited market to sell it, because anyone looking to purchase your property or the value when they're looking at it assesses how many people would possibly want to buy these. And they say there's a tiny fraction of the market who are seeking these things, therefore they're not going up in value the same as other properties. So okay. for everyone who's not Helen, who might not know what a service department is, mm. um, typically um, there's a big group of them, um, something West. So, so what, the rhymes with West and has a QU at the start of it? Sim similar to that. Right. It's basically, it's an apartment that's fully furnished that someone manages the building and people can stay there for short term accommodation. <coughs> um, similar to a hotel, I guess, in essence. I should say, we, um, we actually know a fair bit around um, this industry because eight years ago, something like that, Al and I were considering building and owning the management rights for one of these type of buildings. So we looked fairly in depth into it. And they do, they offer um, rental guarantees, um, a minimum level rental guarantee, but the slick salesperson, when they're selling these things to investors, um, they promote a much higher rental guarantee. They say overall, the apartment complex generally yield about whatever it is, 10%, 8%, whatever it may be. Sounds fantastic. The difference is, and the problem is, overall on these things, that could be the case. Al and I being, say if we own and built one of these things and we own the management rights, we might retain four of them, for example. Well, I'll tell you what, me the manager, I'm gonna make sure ours is rented out before yours is rented out. So overall, the complex might have a good rental yield, but there's a bit of difference between my, mine and your rental yield for the year. Um, the other thing is, say Al and I are fantastic small business owners, um, say that we, it just sold our local milk bar and we've scaled up and we're going to buy the next size business and it's a quest and being fantastic small business owners we can just afford this quest and we work it really hard and we drive it and it's a great business and it's chockers and everyone's doing really well what do small business owners then do they go and sell their next business and they move to the next one which is if you haven't got a business that's scalable the only out for it or the way to cash in is to get it to the maximum and sell it so we go and sell it to someone else who can't run a business for for peanuts. Any, peanuts is a good <laughs> word. Yes, I was stumped there for a word. Um, for peanuts, and uh, they come in and they run it terribly. <coughs> that affects your investment. Don't cough, you're going to hurt you. So um, just to, just to finalise, Quest is a great business. We stay in their Quest and we travel. Cam and I regularly travel around the country. I know you're feeling guilty about Often stay in Quest, we're not saying they're not a great place. We're saying they're not an investment. What are you looking to do? No, I don't like them very much at all. As an investment. No, as an investment. <laughs> Have a good day. See you guys.